In PCB design, there are times when you like to perform modifications to multiple objects in your schematic, PCB, or library files. For example, you might want a subset of resistors to be moved from bottom to top layer. Or another example, all net labels on a sheet or a project to have a particular text formatting. This is what we call as global editing in general. My name is Eugene, and in this video, I'll be showing you on how we can perform global editing in Altium Designer. To perform global editing in Altium Designer, you would first need to select the multiple objects and then perform the global editing on the selected objects. So one of the easiest selection modes is using the shift key by holding the shift key on your keyboard and then the multiple clicks on our mouse to select the multiple objects. You can also do a right click on an object as well and then click on find similar object. If you like to perform a more advanced and complex query on the design, you can also make use of the schematic, the PCB, the schematic lib or the PCB lib filter. Once we have selected the multiple objects, we can then use the global editing panels to edit them. You can use the schematic PCB schematic library or PCB library inspector to globally change the properties for all the objects. Or if you like to perform it in a tabular form, which lists down all the objects that are selected along with its properties, you would then make use of the schematic PCB schematic library or PCB library list panel. So now I will be showing you some example situations where you can make use of these features in PCB design. You might want to change all the net labels in your project to be a certain text formatting due to a change of documentation standard. You not only want to change it for the net labels in the schematic document, but also for all these open documents in your project as well. In Altium Designer, you can make use of either two selection modes. You can do a right click on this net label and go to find similar objects where you would query for objects that meets object kind equals as indicated by this same key here, net label. I'll then check on select matching and instead of doing it for only this current document, I will do it for all project documents and I will then click on OK. And you will see that this schematic inspector panel would then pop up that shows me that all of these uh, objects have this particular color as well as this font here. The reason why the X1 and the Y1 has triple dots under a parenthesis is because they are different for all the selected net labels. So what I can then do is I can then, if I would like to globally change it for all this net labels colors, I can click on this color here and click on the triple dots where I can change it to a more drastic color such as a blue. As you can see here, all of these net labels will then be changed from red to blue, not only for one document, but for all the documents in our design. What I can also do is instead of using find similar object, I can make use of this SCH filter panel here, which you, if you do not have it open, you can simply go onto your bottom right hand corner, SCH, and then just click on SCH filter. What I can then do is I can then just type in is net label so that it find the items that match this particular criteria. <coughs> I'll then select the objects passing this filter and deselect the objects not passing this filter. I'll click on apply and the same set of uh, net labels will be selected throughout my project and then I can change it from blue to say um, maybe green in color. I'll then click on OK. This will change to green. This net labels here in this schematic document will also change to green and so will this. Right, so Changing these kind of uh, objects, right, these multiple objects in your project will be a cumbersome process if you have to do it one by one using mouse clicks. Obviously, these kind of uh, features will definitely help you in order to perform a standardized, perform and create a standardized set of documentation in your design.
So the second example is you might want to select all the resistors in this schematic document. Say for example, this schematic document right here, we would like to select all the resistors in this document. And if we have the cross select mode turned on, we can also make sure that the selected components in your schematic document are also selected in your PCB document. Once we do that, we can then reposition those selected components in our PCB document. Uh, so that it's a, it's a much easier process rather than to go back and forth between schematic to PCB documents. So in order to do that, we can uh, just do a right click on our, say for example, R2. Click on find similar objects where we'll find everything that meets R star. Star is essentially a wildcard, so it's going to select any objects, any components that meets, that has component designator R and anything after that. Okay, I'll then make sure that it's same so that it's like those objects. Check on select matching and instead of project documents, I would click on current document because I only want to select resistors from this current document. I'll then click on OK. As you can see here, all of these resistors will be selected in our schematic document. And not only that, if I were to merge uh, these two windows, you'll see that all the resistors selected in our schematic document will also be selected in our PCB document as well. So what I can then do now is I can then reposition them by going to Tools, Component Placement. I can reposition selected components one by one. Right? I can change their rotation before even placing them as well using the space key. I'm just going to randomly place them in my uh, design here. Or what you can also do is you can do a component placement to arrange them within a rectangle as well. This is a very um, a, a feature that I like a lot because it kind of shows you um, how much space your this uh, particular uh, group of objects would take so that you get a rough idea on how large your uh, PCB board would be. Now if we are in the PCB document and we would like to select some of the components to be moved from top to bottom layer, we can kind of do a multi-select, right? Simply by just drawing a, a rectangle here. We can also say, hey, if I hit the S key, I can select anything that is inside the area, outside the area, touching rectangle, touching line as well. But I'm just going to very easily just do the uh, regular uh, inside area rectangle. And then what if I want to move all of these resistors from, uh, as you can see here, some of like this R1 here is on the top layer. I want to make sure that all of these resistors are on a particular layer. I can make use of my PCB inspector, where I can change this all from uh, a non-uniform layer to all being on the top layer or all being on the bottom layer. I can also say if I want to change this all for all my resistors in my project, I can do a right click on one of them, find similar object, once again do an R star, select match. I can also do a dimming factor such as mask or dim as well. And you'll see that the selected components will be masked out and I can then change it from the top for the bottom to top layer or top layer to bottom layer for example. Right? So you can uh, do things like this in order to uh, multiply change um, the orientation or change a particular layer where a component sits on in PCB document. So the, the things that you can do using global editing is pretty much uh, boundless, right? Because of all the editing capabilities as well as the syntax queries and all those kind of things using your PCB filter or using find similar object. You can even make use of this feature as well to create complex, non-standard PCB footprints. For example, we have this complex footprint package here which we would like to add into our library, right? this ELS31 module. If you look into our um, spreadsheet, the placement of its pads are in non-standardized coordinates as seen here on this Excel spreadsheet provided by the manufacturer. Due to the complexity of its placements, in order to place the pads one by one without a proper procedure, it would quite 
it would be quite a daunting task. To do this in a more efficient manner, you can make use of the global editing features in Altium Designer. Simply just create a PCB library. <coughs> I can then do a place pad to place the first pad, right? Kind of like just to initiate the process, I can uh, make it have a designator of one. I can change it to a rectangular shape and I'll click on OK. So once I do that, um, if I have all of the properties of all the other pads in the spreadsheet, I can simply just do a control A and control C to copy all of these cells here along with the headers. I can then invoke the PCB library list, which will show me all the properties of my pad in a tabular form. I can change this from non-masked objects to all objects. And I will select, I will show all objects from the current component. I will only include pads and I will click on OK. Instead of view, I will change it to edit so that I can actually add more pads to this. I can change these pad properties as well if I want to. But since I've already copied the cells from my Excel spreadsheet, I can simply do a right click and smart grid insert where I can insert the copied cells as attributes on this PCB library list view. Right, as you can see here, all of these columns and its, uh, and its uh, contents are from my clipboard, right, which I do a control C previously. And these are all the attributes from my PCB library list, which is to be created. So as you can see here, it already matches my object kind column to my object kind attribute in my PCB library list. I can do the same as well for my name, right? Simply select the two columns and paste column to attribute. The same goes to X1 to X1. Note that the X1 currently created in your PCB library would be in mils. You don't want that because what you have is in millimeters. So what you would have to do is you would have to do a cancel and make sure that you have the proper grid set up first. As you can see here on the bottom left hand corner, right now you're in mils. If you like to change it to uh, millimeters, you can simply just hit the Q key and you'll see that now you're in millimeters in your PCB library design environment. And then simply do a right click once again and smart grid insert to repeat the process. I'll copy and paste my name once again. I'll copy and paste my X1, my Y1, and I'll also do the same for my X uh, shapes as well, and my X size, as well as my Y size, which is the shape of the pads to be created. I can then click on OK, and you'll see that all the pads will be created, right? And it will all have uh, the designators as is indicated in the column copied. I will delete this pad number one here because it was just uh, needed to initiate the process so that you actually get the pad in your PCB library list. So as you can see here, all of the pads are fairly correct except for these ones here because they are of the wrong orientation. So I can uh, obviously select multiple of them by using my shift and multiple select on my uh, mouse click. And then I can go into my PCB lib inspector to globally make the change for all of the selected pads. I can change the rotation from zero degrees to say 90 degrees. And you'll now see that all the pads are in the correct orientation along with the correct um, designators as well for every single uh, pad. So imagine if you had to do this one by one by placing pad right and so on and so forth it, it will obviously going to be a very daunting task because you would also have to change all of these um, pad shapes as well because they are of a unique shape for for this ones in the inner uh, side as compared to the outer side right so as demonstrated in this video you can make use of pcb global editing in Altium Designer to make changes globally for not only during your design stage in schematic or PCB document, but you can also do that in your schematic library or PCB library as well. So these capabilities in Altium Designer will improve your design efficiency, both in design and library management stages. 
Once again, my name is Eugene and thank you for watching.